We are so glad that you have decided to worship with us today. We do want to remind you that there will be a drive through welcome parade for Pastor Nick and Rebecca this Sunday the 12th at 3 p.m. under the portico. We hope that you will come by and meet our new pastor. We're so excited to welcome him into the church family. We also want to let you know that he is available by phone or appointment if you want to stop by the office. I know that Pastor Nick would love to meet you. Would you join with me in a moment of prayer? Holy God, we come to you today with a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. God, you tell us that sometimes it's hard to praise you and to find things to be thankful for, and that's why, Lord, today during hard times and times of struggle, we bring you that sacrifice. God, we thank you so much for new beginnings, for times of transition, for times that we can draw closer to you when we're unsure of what the future holds. God, we thank you so much for Pastor Nick and what he means to this church, for his vision for Woodland and for his heart to share more about Jesus with those around him. We pray, Father, that as he brings the word to our church today, God, that you would just speak through him, that you would anoint him, Lord, that you would just bring a word to our heart, that you would open our minds and our ears to receive it. God, we thank you also for the story and the testimony that you have given each and every one of us. And I pray that this week, Lord, as we have interruptions in our lives, God, that we would see those as opportunities to share how we know Jesus and part of our story that we can touch other people's lives. Father God, I pray for those who may be at home and hurting and lonely and suffering, that you would be with them, that you would provide comfort and peace and healing. God, I pray for the leaders in our communities as they start to make decisions about reopening schools and businesses and churches. Father, that you would just give them wisdom. You promised, Lord, that for those who ask and believe that you would grant wisdom. And so, Father, we just pray that with total belief. God, I pray especially for the group at Woodland who is working towards developing a reopening plan that they would have guidance from you, God, and would just keep in mind the safety and the needs of our church family. And God, we're just so blessed that even though we can't be together, Lord, that we can still worship together, that we can encourage one another, and God, I pray that we wouldn't give up in doing that. And so, Father, now we join our voices together as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We hope you have a blessed week. Hey guys, I'm glad that you're here this morning and I'm so excited for you to meet our new pastor, Nick. I know that he plans to share with you his story. So I thought that we would talk a little bit about sharing our own stories and sharing the gospel with others today. Well, I miss doing our little science experiments that we um, could do in front of the sanctuary. So I figured that since I'm doing this from home today, that I can go ahead and share one with you. So um, here we go. Okay, so this plate of milk represents the world. So it's kind of plain right now, right? Well, these little dots are gonna be our people. Makes it a lot more interesting. So we've got some green, we've got some blue. And in Acts chapter one, verse eight, Jesus tells his disciples this. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So let's pretend that we are this Q-tip. So we're gonna go into the world and we're gonna do like Jesus tells us to, and we're gonna tell others about him, right? We're gonna go around and tell others. We're not really everywhere, but we're going to the people that we see, right? Well, 
the really amazing thing is that when we add the Holy Spirit, I'm gonna get some of this dish detergent on my Q-tip, we really are able to reach people to the ends of the earth. Wasn't that cool? So we all have a story about how we came to believe in Jesus. And we wanna make sure that others know the good news about how Jesus died for us and rose again to save us from our sins. So let's not keep that to ourselves. Let's be witnesses to the ends of the earth. Let's pray. God, we love you and want to share all about Jesus. Help us to remember that the Holy Spirit can help us spread the good news. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, my Woodland family. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. I invite you now to join with me in the reading of our scripture. Our passage comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to join with me for a moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to start out by thanking you. I want to thank you for all the blessings that you have given us, the blessings that are our family, our friends, and our community. Dear Heavenly Father, this week I especially want to thank you for Pastor Nick and his fiance Rebecca as they continue their ministry here at Woodland and as part of our family. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I just pray that during these times you give us patience and wisdom to follow the journey you have planned for us in our lives. Lord, I also ask that you give us the patience and the faith to trust in you and your plan and your timing instead of ours. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask for all these things in your Son's holy name. Amen.
I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. But this is certainly not how I envisioned my first Sunday at Woodland United Methodist. In fact, this is the first time I can remember in my ministry coming to a new church and preaching to an empty building. But I'm reminded the church is not a building. The church is a people. And this church, although we're meeting at home today, has not closed. We are just doing church differently and in a new way. I want to say that I am so honored to be your new pastor. I was overjoyed when the district superintendent called me several months ago and shared with me the news that I was coming to Woodland United Methodist Church. I am honored to be your new pastor, and I can't wait for one day all of us to gather in this place and meet and worship the Lord together, to hear you sing, to see your smiling faces. But until that day, we will continue meeting this way. I want you to know that we're putting together a task force that will be praying and planning for when the day comes when we can safely and wisely return to in-person worship. But until then, I'm doing my best to get to know you through the phone, through Zoom, and other ways. And I want to say thank you to everyone who has written me and, and uh, called me and prayed for me. I have felt those prayers, and I am so overjoyed to be with you finally and today. I have such admiration for your former pastor, Brother Tim. He and I were in a clergy cohort group together, and I first met him there. I have big shoes to fill, and I realize that. Join me in continuing to pray for him as he enters this new season of life and ministry with his family. I heard about a uh, man that was brand new to a church, and uh, it was his first Sunday, and he preached, and they'd put his picture in the paper. It was a small town, and he was out and about greeting people, and people knew who he was, and he decided he was going to go make a visit to the nursing home and see some of the uh, patients there. One of them was a lady who was a member of his church, and uh, he just knelt down by her uh, wheelchair, and he smiled, and he said, Ma'am, do you know who I am? And she said, Well... If you go to the front desk, I'm sure the nurse can tell you. Well, you'll be patient with me, please, as I learn your names and your faces. I have a feeling I'm going to have to learn twice. First with a face mask on, and then what you look like without a face mask. And so I certainly appreciate your patience as we learn each other. But I can't wait to know you and serve you, and I'm honored to be here. A few moments ago, we heard those words from Sacred Scripture. Jesus was with his disciples, and he was leaving them. They had questions about the coming kingdom. It was on the forefront of their minds. But Jesus was interested in the message of the good news spreading to the ends of the earth. And he said to his disciples, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of of the world. Someone said that you can describe the book of Acts and the movements in that book using three prepositions, up, down, and out. Jesus goes up, he ascends to the Father, the Holy Spirit comes down and empowers and gives birth and life and energy to the church. And that church goes out and shares the good news with the world. Did you know that when you share your faith in Jesus Christ with someone else, a friend, a neighbor, a family member, you can completely change the direction of their life? It's true. The disciples did that, and it turned the world upside down. And it's been true in my own life. This is my story. I was born on January 19, 1987, in Flowood, Mississippi. My family was from Simpson County. My mom was from Mendenhall. My dad was from McGee. My parents were Raymond and Susan Hughes. And at the age of three, my parents divorced. I have an older brother, Greg. He's uh, 43 this year. He lives in Hawaii now with his wife and their three kids where he works in the solar panel industry as an electrical contractor. And then I have a sister, Contessa, who's almost two years older than me, and she was born with special needs, and she's at home with our mom. She's been a great gift to my life, and God has changed how I see the world through my relationship with my sister. We moved to Panama City Beach in 1990, and I was raised there and wasn't raised in church. 
But when I would go back to Mendenhall to see my grandparents in the summertime, usually for about two months, church was a part of our routine. My mamma Nell would take us to Gafer's in uh, Jackson, and she would get me uh, several suits to wear. She believed in dressing up when she went to church. That was part of their tradition. On Sunday morning, she would come into my bedroom, and she would wake me with a smile. She would always say, Rise and shine, sunshine. It's time to get ready for Sunday school. And off to Sunday school we would go where I would uh, meet with boys and girls my age and hear stories from the Bible and stories especially about Jesus Christ. That planted a seed in my life that, that would develop and bloom later on. I'd go to vacation Bible school and hear more stories about Jesus. And all of these stories stuck with me. I saw Jesus in my grandparents. I also saw Jesus in their friends and neighbors. For instance, their backyard joined a lady named Ruth Myers. Miss Myers was an elderly member of their church, and I would walk from their backyard through her backyard through a gate that connected their yards, and I would visit with Miss Ruth, primarily because she'd give me a handful of peppermint candy. I keep candy in my office today just because of her to remember her life and the impact she made on me. She would tell me about Jesus, and she would talk to me about the Lord. And then when I was in the fifth grade, two very important things happened that changed the direction of my life. I was in my second year of playing soccer, and I was no great soccer player. I played defense in a community league. The first year I played soccer, we didn't win one game. It was quite humiliating. But the second year, we had a coach who was very gifted at bringing us to our full potential. He had played soccer in college. And everybody called him brother. The other parents would call him that. And I thought that strange, but he was a pastor. And I remember there was something special about him and the way he lived. He encouraged me, and because he was my coach and my friend, I started going to church in Florida. It wasn't long after that I was a part of a youth group of a First Baptist church. And, and then one day in the fifth grade, two businessmen showed up to my school. They came to my classroom. They were dressed in suits and ties. They were Gideons, and they gave us all a copy of the New Testament. Well, I took that little red New Testament Bible home, and I began reading from Matthew chapter 1. And I began reading the Bible each and every day. And on December 5, 1999, at the age of 12, I gave my heart and my life to Jesus Christ. Those were witnesses who came into my life who pointed me to Jesus. They bore witness of the good news and it took fruit in my life. Well, then from there, I began to pray every day, go to church on a regular basis, read the Bible. And that I was baptized and became very involved in my church. And then at the age 14, I was at Covenant College at Lookout Mountain, Georgia, for a youth camp. During worship, God was tugging at my heart. This had been going on for months before we led up to camp. I knew God was calling me to be a preacher and a pastor. And I don't mind sharing with you, it was one of the scariest moments of my life. It was overwhelming. I remember reading Romans chapter 10 and seeing the words, How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? And I remember the Holy Spirit plugging at my heart, saying, You will be a preacher. I didn't tell anybody. But at that youth camp, I had a moment with God where I got on my knees in the pew and I said, God, I surrender to doing whatever you want me to do. My life would again take a new direction. I went back to church and several months later, my pastor, Dr. Jerry Weaver, came over to our youth building. It wasn't connected to the sanctuary. It was across the parking lot. I quickly realized he wasn't coming just to stick his head in and visit with the youth like he sometimes did. He was looking for me. He came up to me and he put his arm around me and he said, Nick, God has called you to preach. You know it and I know it. And I want you to preach this Sunday night. I was terrified. But I looked at him and I said, yes, sir. And I preached my first sermon when I was 14 years old in that Baptist church. The following year, as a 15-year-old, that church had a business meeting and they licensed me to preach. Two weeks after that, I was asked to officiate my first wedding. 
I wasn't old enough to drive a car in the state of Florida, but I was apparently old enough to marry a couple. And to this day, I don't think that couple knew if they were getting married that day or if they were adopting a kid. But that's my story. God was at work in my life. My first job ever was serving on staff at a church. And then the week before I went to a Christian college in Mississippi to get my education, I was ordained in that Baptist church. And I served churches while I was a college student and preached in Tennessee and Mississippi and Arkansas and even Alaska. And God was working in my life. And during my college experience, I got to know some extended family that I had on my dad's side, and they were United Methodists. And the more I got around them and learned about John Wesley and what the United Methodist Church was and believed, I was really drawn to this church. They began to say to me things like, you know, you sound a lot like a Methodist, Nick. And so I entered a time of, uh, and season of discernment. But I was pastoring a church in Memphis and going to seminary in New Orleans. You can imagine how difficult that commute was. Then God opened up a door for me to go to Jackson, Alabama, where I pastored a church there. And then two weeks after I finished my education at uh, New Orleans Seminary, I received a phone call from Dr. Larry Bryars, who just retired from Frazier. At that time, he was a district superintendent, and he said to me, I have your name given to me by our bishop. Would you meet me for coffee? And so I did, and that led to a time and season of more discernment. And a few months later, I was pastoring a Methodist church in Florida, where I've been for the last five and a half years. And I am so excited about this new chapter of ministry with you. This is my story. It is a story where God gets the glory. God sent witnesses into my life who told me about Jesus Christ and how He could transform me and how He could put my life in a new direction. And when I became a Christian at the age of 12 and accepted Jesus for myself, I found that my grades got better, my attitude improved, I had purpose for living all because people witnessed in my life and pointed me to Jesus. And there has been no turning back. Well, I wonder about you today. Who pointed you to Jesus? Who told you the old story of a Savior who came from glory and who talked and walked among us and healed the sick and preached good news? Who was crucified? and yet rose and overcome evil and oppression and death. Who was it that spoke into your life that pointed you to Jesus when you were moved by the Holy Spirit and said, I want to follow Christ? Was it a parent, a Sunday school teacher, a neighbor, a classmate, a friend? I also wonder, who do you know in your life that their direction might change if you would love them, and tell them what God can do for them by showing them how God has transformed your life and is transforming your life by the good news of Jesus Christ. So how will you bear witness? That's my challenge to you this week. You have a story just like I have shared with you my story. I want to encourage you to pray about someone that you would share with and just say to them, you know, have I ever told you what church means to me and why I go? and how I have faith and hope, and I just want to share with you what Jesus means to me. You never know the impact that might make in someone's life. It is your story, and it's the story of Jesus Christ transforming your world and your life for His glory. Make it all about Jesus, because after all, that's what our lives are all about. We live for God's glory. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior, all the day long. And while you're sharing your story with someone else, I want to hear your story too. Some of you have taken the time to write me. I want to hear from all of you. Maybe you just take a few moments this week and tell me how you came to faith in Christ. Maybe you grew up in the church all your life. 
Maybe you had a spouse or a friend that invited you to come and hear and see and learn about Jesus. I want to know about you. What's your faith journey look like? Where are you at today? What questions do you have? I'd love for you to email me when you get a chance at rev.nick.huges at gmail.com. I can't wait to hear from you and what God has done in your life and what God is doing today. We have good news, and the world today that we see in the news is in desperate need of this good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you will be my witnesses. So as you go out into this world, whether it be virtually or as you go to the grocery store or wherever you may be, bear witness of that upward world, that kingdom that's not of this world of which we are citizens. And may God be with you and empower you as you go. May we pray. Father, thank you for this day and for this new chapter of ministry. For Woodland United Methodist Church and for Rebecca and I, as we partner together to serve you. I ask that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I might follow you in order to lead others down the right path. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And may you get the glory in everything that is said and done from this day forward. Lord, would you send revival Send it to this church, send it to this community, send it to our state and to our nation, and send it to my heart. In Jesus' name, amen.